thing for me. You know, I was fortunate enough to be at UCLA in 98. Obviously, he got to L.A. in 96, but he was always, you know, he was young, fresh out of high school. So he was always up on our campus, walking around, playing in the men's gym. We'd work out after our practice. So I used to, you know, go in and watch him practice after we had practiced. So I would just be blown away like, God damn, this dude's only two years older than me. Mm -hmm. Ain't no fucking way I'm making the NBA. Mm -hmm. This is like the, the standard. You know, mm -hmm. little, little did I know he'd be one of the greatest ever. But, you know, so it went from admiration to me making the league and, and realizing that I've been watching him since, you know, he got to the league. And, you know, I always prided myself on defense. So I was just like, okay, well, shit, I'm going to have to guard this dude one day. So it went from that to just every time we would link up, it would just be a battle. You know, great offense is always going to be good defense. I just wanted to make Kobe work every time. So if Kobe was going to score 30 on me, I wanted him to take 30 shots. If Kobe would pump fake me too much, he knows I was going to hard foul his ass. If he got mm -hmm. by me, it was no easy layup. So, and I think he respected that about me. Uh, and all that kind of culminated um, in Orlando <laughs> with mm -hmm. the, uh, the infamous ball fake. And yeah. Yeah. that was a, a funny, crazy uh, situation. Um, you know, we were both headed to the playoffs that year. The, the, the Magic and the Lakers had played in the finals the year before. Mm -hmm. And everyone was expected to happen again. And it was just intense going into the playoffs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he, and if anyone played against Kobe, you know, Kobe is obviously the, one of the most physically gifted and skilled guys we've ever seen, but he's also a, a mental giant. So he always yeah. tries to get an advantage any way possible. And he was just, he elbowed me a couple of times and <laughs> did some shit. So I was to the point where we're like, fuck it, we're about to fight, bro. Fuck all this basketball <laughs> shit. <laughs> Um, you know, so the, when the play happened, it, I promise you, Chris, it wasn't even something that I like. I'm gonna fake the ball in his face, like literally, my yeah. arm, my arms just did that shit. But yeah. yeah, you know, the crazy part that happened after that a lot of people don't know was <laughs> free agency. Uh, we ended up losing in the Eastern Conference Finals to Boston. Yeah. Lakers, Lakers beat Boston in the finals. My contract's up in Orlando, so I'm actually talking to Pat Riley and D Wade about going to join their big three. You know, they they, they were forming the big three that summer. Yeah. And I was all set to go right from Orlando, right down the freeway to Miami. <laughs> and out of the blue, I get a call from a number that I don't have. Like, and the people who know me, I rarely answer my phone, even if I know who's calling. <laughs> but I just happened for some reason to answer the call that day. And it was cold. And I was like, well, like, who the fuck is this? And they got cold. And so we get to back and forth talking. And at the end of the day, he's just like, you know, anyone crazy enough to fuck with me is crazy enough to play with me. Do you want to be a Laker? And shit, I'm a California kid. My favorite team was Showtime coming up. So I'm like, hell yeah. And like, no bullshit. Like, two or three days, two or three days later, I was a Laker. You know, so that's really wow. how me coming to the Lakers happened. And then from there, to that point, we, we like really became brothers. You know, we were both going through a lot in our personal yeah. lives um, yeah. that first year. So we were hanging out, going to dinner, going out, doing stuff, and really just yeah. got a chance to know the man, you know, outside of the mamba and, and the father and you know, all the, all, the, all the shit he was into. And like I said, really became a, a brotherhood and in a, in a real close friendship so much to the point where, you know, he's sending my kids shoes every time he drops a new release and was sending their team shoes. And it would be crazy because, you know, he would coach Gigi in these tournaments and I'm coaching the Twins. We're two years younger than Gigi. And, um, you know, if we happen to be at the same tournament, you know, he'd hit me up like, yo, what time the boys playing? We'd go back and forth. And I tell you, even if we played maybe two hours before, Kobe would show up. He would come, hmm. watch the boys play, you know, say wow. stuff to him real quick and do his thing. So I just thought I was really fortunate to see the other side of Kobe, you know, outside yeah. of the Mamba. Um, I, obviously, I got to play against the Mamba and become a teammate with the Mamba. But to be able to know Kobe Bryant, the, the man, the father, the businessman, the husband, is what I really cherish. And, you know, obviously, gone too soon. Rest in peace to him, Gigi, and everyone else lost. And, and we definitely miss uh, his energy uh, on this planet. Definitely, truly one of the iconic figures of our lifetime. Matt, hey, I'll let you go, man. Thank you so much. No doubt. Us, my brother. And hey, yeah. man, I love you. I'm proud Appreciate of you, my it. brother. No you doubt. doing your thing, man. Definitely. All right? Congratulations with this, man. I love what you're doing, man. You just said, fuck it. I'm a hustling grind, and I've been catching every show, man. So let me Thank know if there's you. any way I can help. And, uh, Thank you, know, you. Good luck with everything. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate oh my you, my brother. No doubt. I'll talk bro. to you soon. Right. Later. All right. Bye.